Orlite 23 is a is a type of uh, Canadian banded amethyst that's found in the Thunder Bay region. It's a it's a variety of Thunder Bay amethyst. It's a little bit special because it combines the normal Thunder Bay amethyst with chevron amethyst, which is mainly found in Africa. So we have both the stem of the of the of the crystal this part as well as the top, which Thunder Bay amethyst is generally just the top. The beautiful clusters of, of of hematite coated amethyst, but it doesn't usually have the stem like this. There are a few mines in the area which have a stem like this, but not generally. Okay, so that, that's kind of what it is. And it's basically a type of quartz, uh, but a very special type of quartz. But you know, quartz is a magical thing. We use it in everything. Computers, cell phones, watches, it's magical stuff. The location of it is, is in a mine just just to the north of uh, Thunder Bay, about 50, 50 kilometers north of Thunder Bay. And it's a pretty unique location. Just above us is is the uh, Thunder Bay intrusive igneous event, which is really interesting. So we're kind of uh, sitting in the middle of the entire Thunder Bay amethyst deposit, which is huge. It's a huge deposit of amethyst, which formed at the about about a billion years ago. And there's lots of amethyst deposits in the area, so they vary quite a bit between location to location. It's a type of, of amethyst that is, is formed by this, this banding pattern. It's, it's formed by metamorphic processes. Uh, basically, a hydrothermal vein deposits this stuff. And normally, ameth well, amethyst forms in many ways. It's basically quartz, which has been heated and irradiated. And that causes it to turn purple. Now, in our crystal, we have different bands of amethyst, which formed in different times. And each of the layers is a little bit different. It has different qualities. It has different colors sometimes. And it has different inclusions in it. So it's a unique combination of all these different types of amethyst and quartz, which make it unique. These are like tree rings on a these are like tree rings on a tree. Uh, they record time. So these are deposited. You see the pattern is the same in all of them, if you can tell. And uh, each of those represents a separate volcanic event. A volcano about a billion years ago tried to get to the surface and didn't quite make it. It hardened underground. But the result of that was it heated the groundwater. And that groundwater formed uh, a hydrothermal flow. And that's a mixture of hot water and minerals. You know, it's about eight to thousand degrees or so. And that moves through the ground until it cools off. And it just happened to cool off right where our mine is in a big fault crack. It's, it's wow. a huge system of faults that formed in the mid-continental rifting about a billion years ago. You see a lot of stuff out there that's or like 23 now that's just not original. It's the pattern of banding which makes it special because there's a lot of crystals in the area which have banding in it, not just ours, but we have a, a pretty unique pattern. You can see each band is separated by this little white layer, which uh, replicates itself in all the crystals. Basic, all the crystals basically have the same stem. It may have a different top on there because it terminates in different zones, but the band, the pattern of banding is identical in all the orlite crystals. So if you don't see this double chevron, for instance, right here, then and this is followed by a layer which is highly included with all kinds of minerals inside here. If you don't see that pattern, that replicating pattern, you don't have orlite. Uh, there's a few pieces of orlite which don't show much of the banding because of various reasons. <laughs> see, it could be shorter, but you still see the same pattern of banding, even if you look in this one. That that pattern of banding is pretty unique to orlite. And, of course, that mineral inclusion, that zone of heavy mineral inclusion, that's totally unique to our light. It's got an intensely uh, included zone that comes from the igneous intrusive event, which is slightly to the north of us, which is a platinum, silver, gold deposit. And it's pretty rich in minerals. And we, we benefit from that because the minerals from that mine melted into the solution, made the hydrothermal event, and then was precipitated out in the crystal itself. So I, as far as I'm, I, I know, there's no other 
crystal that, that's found in the Thunder Bay area that has that rich deposit of minerals in it. Red caps are a pretty unique feature, but they're, they're also found in many, many other crystals that are found in the area. What it happens is these crystals are basically piezoelectric. And when they, when they first form, there's no red cap on them. They're, they're just purple. Then as it sits in the pocket, which is a big vug of heated water, it, it sat, sat there for millions of years, obviously. And then what happens is when you put pressure on the rock, it develops a charge from, from one end to the other. And the, these, are, these are basically an iron cap. It's basically made of iron oxide, which is, you know, hematite. And then this stuff adheres to the surface over time and glues itself on there in little sphericals. And these sphericals make the coating of the, of the red cap. So it's basically an iron coating that, that gets stuck on the top by a type of electroplating. It's not quite electroplating, but it's close. And that's kind of how they form. There's a, like I said, though, there's other crystals in the area which make red caps, but none quite so distinct as ours. Like we have a very solid, very heavy red cap. We're, we're finding out more about the crystal all the time. And thanks to the good research that's done by the people that, that have worked on the, the uh, platinum deposit just to the north of our, our lease, uh, we've learned a lot more about the, the types of conditions that form the aurolite, like the volcanic events, these separate these separate layers, the growth layers in the crystal, we found out that that these in fact are uh, volcanic events, one volcanic event followed by the other, followed by the other, and the composition of their mining tells us a lot about what's in our crystal. So we've learned a lot more about the specific minerals that are included in here. It's very difficult to identify included minerals because they don't form in the usual system that they grow in when they're free of the crystal. In other words, most minerals grow in the air and not inside another crystal. So if it grows inside of another crystal as an inclusion, it doesn't have the same geometrical configuration. And that makes it very difficult to identify. Well, it, it, you've got to look for this, this layer of, of inclusions here, but it's difficult to see with the naked eye. So. Uh, the pattern of banding is really the best thing they should go for. Uh, and, and trust your dealer. I mean, if you deal with a competent person, uh, then that's the best bet really is, is an honest dealer because there are a lot of imitations out there. The only the one that's actually valid is one in South America. It's a small type of red cap crystal which grows in South America where they have some beautiful, incredible minerals. Um, and this is, it's similar to Arlite, but it's just a hematite included uh, crystal with one or two layers in it so it's 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 similar to ours in, in many ways but it just doesn't have the complexity or, or the history that that Oralite has that's okay for them to believe that unless they unless they actually handle it and and expose themselves to it and get to know it uh i wouldn't i wouldn't uh trust it at all but you know you have to actually hold the piece and get to know the, the crystal itself before you appreciate its value. Um, and that, that's that's my experience anyway. This stuff yeah. changed my life. And so um, I've, I've got a bias towards it. <laughs> Ever since I became involved in this crystal well, almost 20 years ago, uh, my life has just changed in a remarkable way. And um, it's, it is a little bit hard to describe, actually. <laughs> Basically, a scientist, but uh, the 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 appeal of this crystal to the healers was was evident from the start. I used to sell or like when I first became involved with it in a small way, and I ended up just giving crystals to healers because they were using them effectively in their practice. I still do that to this day, actually, if I know a real healer, and uh, th th that's kind of remarkable. And they use them in a variety of different ways, which I'm not really qualified to explain. <laughs> And you just put the tip up to your hand and go like this. You can feel a force that, that's touching your other hand. And, and we really don't have a name for that force, except it's part of the life force itself. That sort of, that sort of thing is called orgone energy. And we just don't know that much about it. But if you study the nature of the crystal and look at the orgone generators, there's definitely a match 
So in my opinion, this, this crystal itself is a natural orgone generator. And so it's not just metaphysics. It's just, it's just regular science that we don't understand yet. Geology is a, is a basically an economically driven profession. You you study geology so that the miners can go in there and find the right mineral and make a bunch of money. And uh, this crystal is is helpful to geologists because each each of these separate little lines here represent a different volcanic event. Now they've found six of the volcanic intrusions which hold platinum and gold and silver, but there's actually more than, than six zones here in the crystal. So it's my opinion that there are quite a, there are at least two of the intrusive events which they haven't found yet. So that would be one thing they could they could use orolite for. And you know, studying these 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 little bands here do represent an age when things were happening on the Earth that varied slightly. And you could always uh, find out stuff from history about that sort of thing. So I think that's significant. But uh, learning the connection between orlite and the actual metaphysical properties which people have, I think there's a lot, to, a lot of work to be done there if people look at it objectively. You know, unfortunately, there's the geological community uh, didn't really uh, hit it off with the people, the metaphysical community, and they still don't. They're they're kind of at odds with each other. I mean, the the geological community thinks the metaphysical people are kind of hokey and uh the metaphysical people believe that the the ge that the, the scientists are a little stodgy and, and not very open-minded and i think both groups could be a little more tolerant towards each other and and pay attention to each other when some one of the other groups finds something significant they shouldn't discount it automatically you know and that's unfortunate i think what's been done don't believe what people tell you find out for yourself that would be my recommendation to people uh who are buying crystals and the power of the crystal basically comes from you and you know that's that's the key to i think having a good experience with this crystal